Hi folks, my name is Kyle, and I like to use and talk about the Undercover Umbrella in Splatoon 3. Recently, Lightning Music asked me a question about picking fights with the Undercover Umbrella. When should you do it, and when should you walk away? When it comes to shooter games, historically the objective has been pretty simple. Take out the other team more often than they take out you. Splatoon may have shook up the genre with its ink-based mechanics and its turf wars, but at some level the same principle still holds. Get your opponents off the field, and achieving your objective becomes that much easier. The Undercover Umbrella has a fairly unique playstyle when compared to most other weapons, so it can be tough to decide whether or not you should engage an opponent. So how do you decide when to press your advantage, and when you should wait for backup? Well, I channeled my inner Jeff Foxworthy and came up with a test to help people out. I call it the Swifts Method, and it's a six-point plan for deciding when to take on an opponent with the Undercover Umbrella. If you like this sort of thing, be sure to subscribe to this channel for more fun and informative Nintendo content. Let's get started. So let's start with an easy one first. Do you currently have your shield ready to deploy? With the Undercover Umbrella, you'll probably have a slower fire rate than your opponent, and you'll need the tanking ability of your shield to make up the difference. If you don't have your Umbrella shield, you're a sitting duck for basically every weapon in the game, so you shouldn't be starting something if you don't have your shield ready to go. If you lose your shield in the middle of an engagement, you'll have to make a snap decision as to whether or not to continue fighting. If you've already landed two hits and are confident in your dodging skills, you can hang in there to hit one more shot and get the KO. But if you're struggling to hit your shots, losing the shield might be your signal to stand down and get out while you still can. Next, let's examine who you're engaging. Does the weapon you're facing present a favorable matchup? The Brella is better against some weapons than others, preferring to take on weapons with longer charge times and avoiding weapons with unconventional mechanics. Chargers are generally going to be your best matchups, because if your shield is ready, a charger needs to hit two shots to bring you down, and it'll take several seconds to charge those shots to do it, which should give you time to move in and put them within your effective range. Squiffers and Bamboozlers are a bit more tricky to deal with, but if you're moving around and keeping the charger in front of you, you'll generally have a fighting chance. Splatlings are a little trickier to deal with, but if you can use your shield and the terrain to avoid their shots, you'll usually have an opening to move in and take them down before they can recharge. Again, quicker charging models like the Nautilus will give you a bit more trouble, but in general, if you've got a path to your opponent, you can take this fight with confidence. Stringers are fairly similar to chargers, although thus far, they seem to charge slightly faster. The weapons, outside of Reflux 450 Missile Spam, haven't been that popular in the meta so far, so my sample size against them is admittedly small, but I would say you still have a decent matchup against them, especially the vanilla Tri-Stringer. With shooters, if the opponent doesn't have a bomb to knock out your shield, these tend to be a neutral matchup. Lower DPS guns are a good matchup if you can get close enough to hit them, and even powerful guns like the 52 or 96 gal need a fair bit of time to chew through your shield. So generally, you'll have enough time, sometimes just enough, to take a shooter on 1v1 and come out on top. Duelies fall into the same category as shooters. Without a bomb, even the dapple duelies will need a little time to go through your shield, so you can engage them knowing that you'll have a fair chance to take them down. Dually rolls will make it harder to keep them in front of you, so try to keep your distance as best you can to minimize the amount of shield movement that you'll need. Carbon and splat rollers can one-shot your shield if you're too close, and they generally want to be as close to you as possible, so you should always try to maintain your distance against them, and back up if they try to force the issue. One useful trick is to use your shots to lay down trails of ink in front of you to make it harder for the roller to move towards you. I've talked a lot about how the Undercover Umbrella will absolutely dominate dynamo rollers, but it really depends on the dynamo's approach to the fight. If they come at you with slow vertical flicks, you will eat them alive. But if they stick to horizontal flicks and try to arc their shots over your shield, they can be a bit tougher to take down. Splatanas fall into the same category as rollers. They've got one-shot power up close, so it's better to keep them at arm's length and force them to approach you instead of closing that distance yourself. Splatana stampers are the scarier of the two thanks to their burst bombs, but both stampers and wipers can give you trouble if you let them. Brushes will go through your shield in a heartbeat thanks to their speed and power, and while ink brushes don't seem to be the threat they were in Splatoon 2, octo brushes are as scary as ever, so try to take these out from a distance, keep your shield in front of them as they're running around, and bail out at the first sign of claustrophobia. 
blasters can get around your shield with their indirect shots, so these are one of the scariest weapons for an undercover brella to take on. You should only engage them if they're in a really disadvantaged position. For example, a range blaster that is surrounded by your ink and that you can get in close to avoid their shots. Sloshers can be even scarier than blasters, because the sloshing mechanic allows these weapons to go over your shield and hit you behind it. And the power and speed of these weapons, especially the tri-slosher, means that they can knock you out in a hurry. You might be able to annoy an explosher, but for the most part, you should avoid these weapons whenever possible. Other Brellas can be a problem for you because of their decent range and the undercover's poor object damage. It will take you forever to go through a splat or tentabrella shield. If you don't have a bomb handy, and the current undercover kit doesn't, you might be on even footing with other undercover Brellas, but you'll need to either flank, splat, or tentabrellas, or wait until they've lost or launched their shield. We can't end this segment without talking about sub-weapons as well. In particular, there are two types of sub-weapons that can give you heartburn as an undercover umbrella. One hit kill bombs, which will destroy your shield in a single shot, and splash walls, which will take you forever to get through thanks to your low object damage. The minute a bomb takes out your shield or a wall gets tossed in your face, disengage immediately and wait for an opening to take the fight on more favorable terms. Admittedly, I don't always take my own advice. I can get overconfident with the umbrella and start thinking I can take on the world but there are certainly weapons that you will have an easier time dealing with than others. Next, we turn to the numbers. Is this battle going to be a one-on-one? -on -one? The worst place to be as an undercover umbrella is in a fight with multiple people. The shield is going to fail that much quicker, and if your opponents are spread out, well, your shield can only face in one direction at a time. Therefore, you want to ensure as best you can that when you engage an opponent, it's going to be a 1v1 for the entirety of the engagement, and that no other opponents are going to jump in halfway through the fight to make your life miserable. Specifically, you're going to want to engage opponents that have gotten too far away from the rest of their team, such as a slayer that's pushed ahead a bit too far or is trying to sneak into your base. This is also another reason why anchors like splatlings and chargers are great to take on, they tend to be by themselves almost by design, so when you approach them, you can be reasonably certain that no one else will be coming to bail them out. Now, if the fight isn't going to be a one-on-one, -on -one, we face a different question. Can you keep the play in front of you? Now, I've been in enough 1v2 battles to know that it's definitely possible to take on multiple enemies and win, but you should only accept a challenge like this under certain circumstances. Specifically, you want both opponents to be close together and firing at you from the same direction, so that your umbrella can block shots from both of them. It's still not an ideal situation, but at least you can keep both opponents at bay, and if you're able to dodge their shots and hit yours, you've got a fighting chance even when you're outnumbered. Now let's talk about the terrain. Can you use the map to your advantage? There are three ways that you can do this. The first is cover. If there are plenty of places for you to hide on the map, you can use them to get to weapons that outrange you, while saving your shield to get across open areas where you're more vulnerable. Next is elevation. We've all seen Obi-Wan Kenobi shouting about the benefits of having the high ground, but sometimes being a bit below certain weapons can help you as well, because they might end up shooting over and past you while you land fall-off shots. Last, we have positioning. There are certain places on certain maps where an undercover umbrella can feel nearly invincible. Specifically, if you can set up at the mouth of a narrow choke point where it's really hard to get behind you, something like the top route across the middle in Mahi Mahi, the top path on Eel Tail, the right corner of the enemy plat in Scorch Gorge, you can stand there with near impunity, because it's either going to take a massive frontal assault or a slow and treacherous flank to move you. Finally, let's consider the situation. Regardless of everything else, is this the right time to be engaging your enemy? There may be times, especially in ranked matches, when the swift test tells you to do one thing, but the state of the match indicates that now just isn't the right time. For example, if you're pushing an isolated enemy in a remote corner of the map, but the rest of the enemy team is crushing your teammates and moving the objective behind you, you should probably disengage from the fight and fall back to help on defense. On the flip side, if your team has a numbers advantage and is looking to control a key choke point, you may want to push a fight or hunt down the remaining enemy players to keep your team's momentum going, even if it's not the most favorable match on paper. Whenever you find yourself deciding on an engagement, keep the current state of the game in mind, because pushing for a single splat may not be the best course of action. 
When it comes to combat, the Swift's test is a good rule of thumb to follow if you find yourself unsure about whether or not to pick a fight, or notice that you're getting steamrolled because you're forever picking bad ones. Make sure your defenses are ready, try to get a favorable matchup against an opponent, try to fight the battle on your terms, and make sure that said fight will actually help your team accomplish its goals. I hope this helps all you budding undercover Brella players succeed in your future matches. So until next time, thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you again in a future video. So long!